Hello everyone, this is Pico Entertainment and we are back again. I'm going to talk about Supergirl now, the long running superhero show on the CW and after a long time, an unexpected announcement really, that the show will finally end on its sixth season. And this is really coming out of the blue because we all know that all of the CW shows had their previous seasons affected by the COVID-19 outbreak and a lot of them had to shorten their seasons from the normal run of 22 episodes to 20. And I've done previous reviews that you can check out on this channel on the likes of The Flash, Batwoman and Supergirl where I've talked about their previous seasons and how the shortened quota of episodes affected I think most of all their storytelling and how they wanted to conclude the stories within those particular seasons. So regarding Supergirl, there was already a lot of queries about how the show would continue beyond its fifth season when the lead actress Melissa Benoist announced her pregnancy. And because she's the lead character of the show, it's very difficult to envisage how they could have continued episodes or storylines when you've got the lead character of the show not present. Now maybe they could have got away with it with early episodes when she was in the first month or two of her pregnancy but obviously as you go on further months she would obviously start to show more and it would be very difficult for her to indeed to do the flying sequences and the action sequences that Supergirl is involved in. So there were already questions prior to this news of how exactly it will continue. We then of course had the Covid outbreak so in one sense that might have been ideal right because you would have had an extended break. Melissa could have had a baby, spent a bit of time with her and then come back and resumed filming for the sixth season. But overall that's not been the case. Now I've seen multiple reactions and theories and speculation online regarding the reasons for the supposed cancellation, whether it was the ratings or directing or the direction of the CW verse, was it the presence of other shows, was it the ongoing presence of the HBO Max, so we're just going to talk about a few of those reasons now quickly and give my own thoughts on what I think was the real primary reason for the show, not necessarily being cancelled, I just think it's being brought to an end. Now first of all is the ratings, now a lot of people have said well the ratings were declining and that's the reason why and we all know Standard 101 when the show ratings decline to a point where it doesn't deem worth to broadcast it anymore it will end up in cancellation right but you have to look at the CW shows and they were really more in unison together and it was in terms of the CW really being promoted with a bulk load of its superhero shows Supergirl, The Flash, Batwoman, Black Lightning, we had Stargirl now which has also migrated over and we've got the Superman and Lois show coming next year and we of course had Arrow of course which started off the whole CW first to begin with. So it's really more of a unified front where they relied not much on the ratings as such it was more on the case of the shows would be merchandise right they make a lot of money from the merchandise that the shows generate as we all know the tone and direction of the shows is very much more of an embracing of the escapism and the superhero adventure and you get a lot more of the costumes and the look and the storylines reflecting that of the source material and it, CW has done very well to exploit and push that kind of narrative with all of the shows for a number of years so it wasn't really reliant as such on the particular ratings Yes, Supergirl did take a dip. It did, for the most part, generate just under a million when it migrated over to the CW. We all know when it began its first season on the CBS network. I think the premiere started off around 14 million. Now, that was to be expected because the CBS is, of course, a much larger network than the CW. So you'd expect big ratings on its first premiere and then you'd get a short, a smaller amount when it goes to the CW. But Supergirl, in actual fact, still remained the second best performing show on the CW after The Flash. The Flash generally gets around a million or above within the US I'm talking about here. And Supergirl used to get that or just below that. Now, for its fifth season, of course, it was paired with the first season of Batwoman debuting on Sunday nights and yeah it did suffer a dip now maybe you could say its association with Batwoman which already had its all of its controversial over its marketing and its casting etc maybe that might have hurt Supergirl a bit that's a I think a plausible reason to say I think 
as I've stated many times in my reviews on season 5 which you could also check out on this channel it wasn't as good as the previous two seasons and I think fans will notice that when it's a certain dip in quality you will get a decline in ratings that's with any particular show so I don't think the ratings while they did suffer a decline I don't think they were the primary reason because they're not the precursor for these shows as such anymore so another reason was the emergence of other shows now people are going to bring up a lot the up and coming Superman and Lois show now for anybody who doesn't know there will be a new show chronicling the adventures of Superman and Lois Lane and they have a family of two boys and this show while there haven't been specific plot details I think the overall concept of the show is going to be much more of a family orientated adventure as we see Superman and Lois trying to juggle their own professional careers along with the superhero adventures of Superman. So many thought well because they're doing a live action Superman this may mean that they want to cancel Supergirl. Now I don't believe that because if you think about it Supergirl was the one that had its own established universe right its own established mythology of which originated Superman you know if you look, think about it the Tyler Hedgeson version he started from Supergirl it was the premiere of the second season I believe along with the likes of Lois Lane and he had a couple of other hints at supporting characters involved along with the integration of Metropolis and over the course of the years Tyler Hedgeson's version of Superman has appeared in other Supergirl episodes and of course the major crossover events most notably the recent crisis on infinite earths so it wasn't a case of Superman was there and seemingly had this presence over Supergirl that's not the case at all you know there was no reason why they could have had both the Superman and Lois shows working alongside the Supergirl shows because Supergirl is based in National City and of course Superman and Lois will be based primarily in Metropolis and the CW first is an ever expanding enterprise where they want to branch out more into the other characters and lesser known names and have them constantly integrate in and interacting with each other with the crossover shows that's how you can build hype for the current shows and also build hype for other characters that you want to bring in so i definitely don't think the superman and lois show was introduced because they knew that would eventually be a replacement for supergirl i really don't think that was the case because we don't know how well the superman show will be received now i generally really like the tyler hedgechin version of superman okay he doesn't have the physical presence of the henry cavill version but his personality and his character is a lot more in tone and in terms of spirit and appropriation of what you would associate a lot more with the superman character than what the dceu version was now i think overall it's been a positive to mixed reaction with his superman some feel that maybe he's been overly dominated by kara's supergirl that he hasn't been able to stand on his own they think he's kind of been weakened or seen as a jobber to supergirl i don't think that was the case as such but this will be the chance for the superman and lower show to really push forward and make superman stand on its own but that doesn't have to be at the expense of supergirl so i don't subscribe to the fact that it was the superman and lower show that ultimately determines the fate of supergirl itself now another theory people are talking about is the hbo max and i've seen a lot of articles that basically implied that because hbo max has recently emerged and they want to do everything they can to promote and push that streaming service hence the release the snyder cut etc that they wouldn't have another platform pushing out all this dc content while at the same time they were trying to get the ball rolling with the hbo max now i can see the logic in that but i don't subscribe to that either because otherwise if that was the case they would literally just migrate all of the cw shows over to the hbo max right so if they really were concerned about the cw network having all this other dc content and it was going to potentially overshadow the hbo max content then they would have just migrated it over and just stopped all the superhero shows being on the cw but they haven't yet to do that now they may do that in the future i don't think so because i think we would have heard some sort of rumblings about that in the future and yes hbo max has got to really look to build on new content they've all got the superhero content or the dc animated shows 
and the live action shows of previous years but they really are struggling to push forward new content for fans to get hyped about but I really don't think that was a determining factor in the end of Supergirl because CW, as I mentioned before, has already had a very established universe that they've built up over years and they wouldn't just dismiss all of that just for the sake of HBO Max. I really don't think that's the case. So I put a nail in that theory also. So the primary reason, it really came down to the fact that Melissa Benoist, as we mentioned before, she was pregnant and she had actually come to the end of her six year contract with the show and I think she thought about it a lot and obviously with this pandemic that we're living in as well she's just had a newborn baby she's come to the end of her contract we all know how demanding that these CW shows are you know they're literally working I guess 17 to 18 hour working days a lot of the actors have to migrate away to Vancouver in Canada spend time away from their families and I think Melissa has considered this and thought she probably wants to spend more time with her baby and has decided not to come back in the future. So that's a very much of a reasonable reason and request. There's no controversy. I know a lot of people will try to look for different angles and maybe try and build some outrage or over negativity. But I think that is the reason is that Melissa came to the end of her contract. We know that for a while she's had a hidden desire, I think, to go back to Broadway. That's where she originated from. She, of course, was also appearing on the Glee show with Grant Gustin as well from The Flash. And I think she's just assessed it and think, well, if she was ever going to leave, this would be the time to do it because this stage she can leave on her own terms rather than if she extended a contract and maybe midway through filming, she maybe thought that she didn't want to continue, but she was bound by her contract, right? So she was very much the master of her own destiny regarding whether she wanted to stay or continue, um, leave the show. That's what I think the overall reason was. And the problem you have is that she's become so synonymous with the role of Supergirl. I mean, I think she's been fantastic. I think she's been really great. I was skeptical in the beginning when I saw the initial screenshots and the announcements of her casting but she really has been a superb interpretation of the character and you can't really recast her you know people have had such an attachment to her they've built up an affinity with her portrayal over six years now you can't really wash that away and bring in a new actress I mean you could do but you risk the issue of people not taking to the new version or the new actress of the character and then really kind of hinders the overall show in the long run you know we've had the recent controversy of course with ruby rose leaving batwoman and then they decided to recast for the second season but that was a different case of course because they're going with a new character right and batwoman unlike supergirl hasn't been able to yet build a strong foundation over a number of years where we can really build a strong connection with the lead actress so they decided to go with another character we saw the same situation with the flash right with um hartley sawyer as ralph digby right and the fact that they're able to recast him because he was primarily a supporting character and again he'd only been in the show for two seasons i believe and yes okay he might have had a fan following but he's only a supporting character he's not the lead character so you can recast and still progress with the show you know, going back to being a lead character, there's no way if Grant Gustin left The Flash, they'd have to cancel The Flash, right? Because again, you've had six years of connecting with Grant as The Flash and he's been as brilliant in the lead role as what Melissa was with Supergirl. We look at another example of Arrow. This is the prime example, right? They clearly wanted to continue with Arrow beyond season eight. I think they intended to go maybe season 10. We've seen that a lot of the times with small ball which reached season 10 supernatural incredibly is going to get to season 15 that's amazing i never expected that to last this long but with arrow it was a similar case where Stephen amell was having to migrate for i think from la to vancouver a lot of the time he again had come to the end of his contract i think for the seventh season and they managed to convince him to do a shortened season eight and I think that was to help them migrate, of course, with the crisis crossover. But again, like Melissa, Stephen didn't like the fact that he was spending a lot of time away from his family and just decided 
this was the time to make the break away because he was more in control of his own destiny rather than being bound to a contract. So that's what I think the overall reason was. I just think there was no hidden controversy, there's no behind the scenes negativity. It's not down to the ratings, it's not down to other shows, it's not down to the HBA Max. I just think this is a case of Melissa reached the end of her contract, she just had a newborn baby in this current pandemic and she wanted to spend more time with her newborn. And this was her best chance now to make a break from the show and they really couldn't continue with a recasting of the lead. That's all I think it is. Now, we may get more details disclosed as the weeks go by, but I honestly think that is. We have, I don't think we've seen any more grumblings with other cast members. If you go by previous interviews and Comic Con appearances, etc., there overall seems to be a very good harmony within the cast members of the show. So I don't think there was any behind the scenes drama that would have participated in the show ending. So finally, I just think we could question how this is going to influence the CW first going forward because. Supergirl, Cara Danvers was an integral part for the a lot of the time of the CW first they really had their own version of the Trinity right where it was Arrow, The Flash and Supergirl that was the kind of Trinity in the same way that you have Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman right and for a number of years they were the really primary characters for which you then branched out into the secondary characters to bring in overall and have their own shows so now you've lost a major part of that Trinity so what do you do now of course they could bring in Superman and maybe if Batwoman proves to be excess then you could have your own secondary trinity, you could have Superman, The Flash and Batwoman. Maybe you could bring forward more um, Katie Lloyd's Sarah Lance to be the kind of more leading female within the trinity if you like. I mean you don't even need to have a trinity but I just think you have a core group of characters to then branch off into the secondary show so it will be interesting to see how exactly they do that Kara and the mythology of Supergirl and the National City and the other characters were a huge part of the crossover events so how do you do that how exactly are they going to exit Supergirl from the show and be able to continue with the current continuity because as we all know now spoilers if you haven't seen the crisis but the ending result of the crisis was that everything was migrated into one planet now right so how are they going to cope with the absence of Supergirl? Now, I've seen a lot of theories. People have pointed, well, maybe Supergirl may go into the future and join the Legion of Superheroes. They've already been introduced multiple times throughout the series of Supergirl. And you've seen various comic book storylines. And you had it also in an animated series, Justice League, where Kara did go on ventures with the Legion of Superheroes in a, another future. So maybe they may do it that way. That may be the best way to do it because then that way you can you can explain Kara's absence and still continue with the universe going forward. Will they then propel now the Tyler Hetchin version of Superman and move him forward and have him really become the main lead or the main character going forward for the CW verse alongside with Grant Gustin? What will happen with the other shows, right? Will they be able to continue? Like many of the shows I think have gone on for longer than what I expected. I mean, Legends of Tomorrow, I believe it's going to season six. There's no way I expected that to go on this long. Maybe that'll be the final season. Black Lightning has lasted a lot longer. It's going to its fourth season now, which I think is great as well. You've had the recent Stargirl series. You can also check out the reviews on my channel for that. That's done very well in its first season. That will, of course, migrate over to the CW first. So they may integrate Courtney Wallace as the more standing female character going forward for the CW verse. And again, we don't know how Javicia Leslie's Batwoman will go. If that turns out to be excess, will they then propel her forward and make her much more prominent character within the CW verse? So there's a lot of interesting speculation that we could have regarding the course of the CW first going forward. But I think just back to reflecting on Supergirl, I think it was a shame because I, I know that this might be very unpopular with a lot of people watching but i genuinely really liked it i thought it was a very good very strong show yes it struggled with its fifth season but i still saw enough potential and enough mileage to at least get to seven seasons i think there was enough there there was great supporting cast great actors playing the characters and i just think if it 
they just assessed the mistakes over the fifth season they could have gone forward and improved and carried on with a season six and maybe ended on the final seventh season I've, i really think there was enough mileage on there to do that so yeah it's just a shame it's disappointing i know it's been very divisive particularly i think the second season because everybody accused it of being agenda driven and pushing on social issues and politics i think if you're gonna throw any accusation it would be that second season i think if you carry on watching the seasons after that i don't think you'll find as much social agendas as what everybody perceives it out to be but yeah it was just a shame and i think overall it's been a successful run going on to six seasons i didn't think it would last that long so i think whether you love or hate the show you have to admire the fact that it's managed to go on for so long in the long run so yeah it's just a shame and a disappointment but we'll see how the sixth season develops and what ideas they'll come up with in bringing a hopefully epic and appropriate conclusion to the story of Cara Danvers and Supergirl. So those are my thoughts on the recent announcement of Supergirl coming to end of the sixth season. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you very disappointed and saddened by this news? Are you like me? Do you believe it could have gone on for another couple of seasons? Or do you think it was the right time to end the show? And at least they're in control of the conclusion, right? It's not a case where they were planning future seasons and it kind of got cut halfway through. At least now they know it's going to end. I believe the final season is going to be about 20 episodes long. So they've got plenty of time to plan and make sure they can get a suitable end to the show and make sure it brings a satisfied conclusion for the fans so those are my thoughts on supergirl ending you can also check out my channel for multiple reviews on all the cw shows particularly supergirl it's fifth season and it's fifth season finale as well you can check all of those out on the channel but that's it for now take care of yourselves stay at safe distances and i will see you very very soon